I'm also here to object uh, to the lack of transparency surrounding the filling of this board position. I know there are Oprah requests made uh, to find out the list of candidates who had applied, uh, and that Oprah request was denied. Uh, the public was not allowed to see the names of the candidates or review their resumes or assess their qualifications. And I do have a copy of um, Board Policy 0143. It states, in considering candidates who have expressed an interest in a vacancy, the Board of Education will interview interested candidates in public. It doesn't say may, it says will. It also says, the representative of the Jamesburg Board of Education is not entitled to vote to fill a vacancy on the Monroe Township Board of Education, and yet Ms. Scott, our Jamesburg rep, voted on this matter. And I know the explanations, I heard the explanations Mr. Gagliardi provided, and I, I just want to make it clear that I understand him. Uh, is Mr. Gagliardi saying that the county superintendent has the power to authorize the board to violate its own policy or statute? Was when Mr. Uh, when the county superintendent Kyle Anderson said, "Figure it out," you know, board majority. What, did the board make him aware of policy 0143? Was he made aware that the Jamesburg board? member could not vote? Was he made aware that the, the interviews will be conducted in public per the policy? Would, would you like to address that? Yes, yeah. please, Mr. Gagliardi, again. So uh, as to the interviews, okay, it says that interested candidates will be interviewed in public. That is, they wouldn't be interviewed in private. It doesn't require that all interested candidates be interviewed. So I am confident that there were no private interviews, and for those who were here last month, the interviews, if they took place, would have been taking place in public. So I'm confident the board didn't violate that. It does not require that every candidate be interviewed. It says all interested candidates will be interviewed in public. That is to say, the interviews will be public and not private. As far as that policy is concerned, and I, I wanted, I hope to have made myself clear, but maybe I didn't. The county superintendent, by the way, was made aware of that policy, but we weren't acting pursuant to or in violation of that policy. The county superintendent's view was, and I assume remains, you folks know better who you want to work with than I do. So you folks select a candidate, majority rules, and that majority included the Jamesburg representative. The county superintendent was aware of the fact that there was a difference of opinion under policy and under law about whether or not the Jamesburg representative was entitled to vote. I don't believe that issue has been resolved, but for the purposes of this evening, it did not need to be resolved because the board wasn't acting pursuant to that policy or pursuant to its statutory authority, which had expired. So that policy cannot be used to guide the board because the 65 days had run. The board is not acting pursuant to its statutory policy. The board is acting pursuant to the county superintendent's directive, majority rules. And that's what you saw unfold here this evening. Well, when I'm reading the policy, it doesn't say that it's no longer valid after 65 days. I mean, it seems to me that you're saying the county superintendent, Kyle Anderson, doesn't care that the policy explicitly states that the Jamesburg rep is not entitled to vote on a vacancy on the more Monroe Township Board of Education. Well, well heavens, I, mean, I, sure, I, mean, I certainly didn't say that. I mean, uh, the county superintendent is as involved with the Monroe Township Board of Education as any district in this county, I assure you. But I want to underscore the county superintendent, well, first of all, the board's policy can't trump statute. The statute says the board can fill the vacancy within 65 days. After 65 days, it doesn't matter what that policy says. The board's authority has expired. The county superintendent takes over, and he has unfettered discretion as to how that vacancy is going to be filled. He exercised that discretion and said, you folks, figure it out majority rules, and was well aware at the time he said that, that there was a dispute over the Jamesburg representative's statutory right. But that had expired with the 65 days. So this board is subject to his authority, he exercised that authority, and I'm confident that the board acted, acted pursuant to his directive this evening. Can you list the, the, the name and the number of the specific statute that you're referencing? I can, I can reference this? it for you. Yes, please. Without Scott. interrupting you, uh, I have a oh, great I'm, I'm tired of hearing <laughs> myself, so please dive in. I have, because uh, because I consulted with our council for my, for my Board of Education, or Jamesburg, 
to get directive as to what I am allowed to and allowed to do as this discussion went on for several weeks. Um, NJSA 18A colon 38-8 enumerates those matters on which a sending district is eligible to vote on receiving district's board. Um, I won't go into total length, you're free to go look it up, um, but there was a case, Evans versus Atlantic City, um, where these, um, the interpretation of what rights the sending district is allowed to vote on. Um, NJ, NJS 18A colon 38-8.1I was when it was amended in 2017, and it states that any matter concerning governance of the receiving district Board of Education, including but not limited to the selection of the board president, vice president, approval, approval of board bylaws, and the employment of professionals or consultants such as attorneys, architects, engineers, or others that provide services to the receiving district board of education. The emphasis is on any matter concerning governance, which, which this would fall under. And any is broad term and can be interpreted. It's, it may, be, may have been interpreted one way by our council and by Monroe's council separately. But policy, um, law always trumps policy. So the law in this case is still somewhat gray, but it does say any. And then once the, super, the county superintendent got involved, the county oversees all of the districts and what they decide supersedes anything that we would have as a, that Monroe would have as a policy. So what the county superintendent says is what goes. I'm not sorry, 